Hi all, my name is Mas Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at this Tesla coil. A friend of mine bought two of these many years ago. He recently found them from storage again and wondered if these could be used to play MIDI files with. So in order to find out, I will do a teardown of it. We will check out some of the design choices and also see what kind of topology and driver this uses. And if it's not a dual resonant solid state Tesla coil, we will see if we can rebuild it into one. So let's get this taken apart. That is getting seriously scary to sit so close to that coil. The whole Tesla coil assembly goes up in three parts as it's pretty normal to do. That we have a top load, a secondary coil and a base with a primary coil. Now let's start off with the top load. It's made pretty simple from two wooden discs and a steel threaded rod going all the way through, which has been yeah, made pointy here at the end for a breakout point. Now this is what you could call a vertical tubing top load. Normally a ringed top load would be a horizontal um, band of maybe five to seven tubes. And that makes a very even field uh, for the magnetic electromagnetic field shaping. So when you do this vertical type, it is important that you do not use too few windings as you do need, if you say you left out these two and you only had this and this, this gap in the field shaping would simply become too great that you would have all kind of a random breakout because it just did not assemble a even field. So I would say that this is made with enough windings to actually when seen like a simulation of electromagnetic properties, actually do get up along the lines of the same capacitance as a full toroid, just as much as a ringed toroid would do that were horizontal. I'm not sure about this secondary coil, how many windings or what wire size that is, but it's pretty apparent that it's only have like one or two layers of uh, varnish that does feel pretty thin. Now it has have some electrical black tape added here. That could be something that the owner has done. But the large black piece up here seems to be a piece of the original construction. Now the terminations up here, they go on the inside with metal, which is a no-go on Tesla coil secondaries simply because you risk having flashovers internally running up and down inside the form here. And the same for the bottom. The bottom connector here is a bolt that goes down into the base here of the primary coil. And that is made pretty nice that it's secured in there, so you can just screw the whole secondary down. But it's a little bit hard to actually um, hit the center of the bolt down there. So let's get these two away. It has what appears to be a six turn primary coil. It is some kind of a rubber cable or rubber hose, but as I can, I can press it uh, pr pretty thin. So it's certainly not a wire, but I think they have been, they are running some kind of yeah, conductor inside a plastic tube in order to get some isolation because this is sold as a layman unit. So there's no, chance you can touch any conducting parts here, which is quite clever. Um, probably not so good for heat dissipation, which also tells me from the, the weight of this unit that I do not expect to find a whole lot of power electronics in here because it's around two kilograms. It has three knobs and an off switch and an IEC input plug. Now the three knobs makes me think that it might be BPS on time and then I'm not quite sure what else uh, it would be. But I'm guessing it could be something like a uh, solid state variac, so you can actually adjust the voltage. Besides that, it has a 120 millimeter fan, some cutouts for airflow, and at the bottom here, we can see it's some kind of sticker OTK number one from 2017, 31 March. I'm not too sure uh, who actually made these, but there's a few known uh, Tesla coil builders like Tesla coil.ru or I think it's called something like Tesla coil Moscow. 
So there's quite a few uh, companies in Russia that do build commercial Tesla coils. So let's pop this lid open. And it actually has long enough wires so you can put it out here on the side. But what, what is this? Yeah, I, I mean, okay, it's, it's, it's a fine enough coil, but why build such a huge enclosure? Is that just to make it be apparently bigger than it is? I mean, that takes up like one third of the space here. I'm not quite sure why they would build such a huge enclosure. Maybe this comes in different uh, power versions, so you can buy some with a, something with a higher power rating and it's the same enclosure. There uh, seems to be some kind of add-on board here going over to the three per centimeters at the side. We have some DC bulk capacitance. And other than that, I can see that we have four TO247 IDPTs or MOSFETs down there. But just from a first glance, this looks like a regular, regular SSTC. If we start out with the driver and input section, we can see here that we have the three potentiometers that they have in fact placed a ground wire going between all three of the chassis here. And that goes to ground of the middle here. So they actually had to ground the potentiometers when they are mounted so close to the inverter and primary coil. We can also just see the gate drive transformer sitting up here using some very thin wire on a flat planner PCB yeah, e-core transformer. And on the underside here I can see it has four outputs. So the four switches that it goes to are not two and two in parallel for half bridge but must in fact be a full bridge. There is one feedback transformer which I assume is just for a feedback signal for the frequency because there is only one set so I doubt there is any overcurrent protection. It seems to be some 30 to 30 so we're 1 to 1000 radio feedback and once we are also here we can note that all the DC film capacitors the blue here are one microfarad so they are not a resonant capacitor so this is a regular solid state tesla coil and not a dual resonance so this would not be able to play music that well unless we yeah just use a regular audio interrupter instead of this so it can be done but as a really good one like you can make some good long lightning bolts with a dual resonant it's not going to happen with this one so in here between the PCB and the heatsink, we can at the bottom or the left see the 25 amp bridge rectifier and then we can see the two first IDPTs of the full bridge. Now I could actually uh, look for the part number through a hole in the PCB and these are international rectifiers GB50B60. So these are some 600 volts, 33 amp IGPTs, which is quite unusual in a solid state Tesla coil. But on the far back of this um, view here, there is actually a 20, 75 degrees Celsius um, sensor sitting on the heatsink. So it has a switch off circuit when the heatsink get, gets too hot, instead of have, having overcurrent protection on the full bridge itself. When it comes to the driver board itself, we can see here we have the gate, the gate resistors along with the plus minus, minus plus, minus plus, plus minus. So all this row is the gate drive transformer outputs. And then there's just some loops over here. I'm not quite sure what that is, but perhaps some kind of feedback. But the driver itself is all mounted down here and it has some kind of white stuff on all the ICs. It's actually like they have been sanded down. Yeah, actually it does look like it has been sanded down. So it's not really possible to see what kind of ICs have been used, but I would make a professional guess that we have some 505 timers as these connect up to the potentiometers and we have some kind of comparator sitting here. 
and up here we have the two gate drive ICs as these connect up to the gate drive transformer primary. Probably just a uh, standard uh, solid state tether coil driver with a added comparator for a feedback uh, wire current transformer instead of antenna feedback. That it uses a current transformer feedback on the primary circuit. That could also explain why we have a third pot meter over here. That there would be some kind of startup oscillator needed in order to use a primary feedback on a non resonant primary circuit as it is in a solid state Tesla coil. So I have pointed out a few design flaws in this, but there has been nothing that you can say was really critical. Maybe except that, yeah, some choices are made to keep the price down. But I, what I really do not like is that the grounding wire from the secondary coil base here goes down, connect to the heatsink. And then the heatsink is connected via these, this little decoupling capacitor to the grill of the enclosure on the fan as that is the only metal part that you can actually touch from the outside. But that makes this the only artificial ground plane for this Tesla coil. There is no other ground connections outside of this cabinet. It's all mounted on a piece of acrylic plastic and it has some tape um, lining on all the sides over here. You can actually see the shine in the, in the, against the light here. But that is really not a good way of getting a good RF circuit or a good RF ground. There should really be some kind of terminal on the outside or at least make some part of the cabinet a, a big metal surface to have a artificial ground plane to have the sparks capacitively couple back to. I am nowhere near any fan of just using the heat sink I have it hooked up to 230 volt AC, which just goes directly to it. Turned it on, the fan started spinning. And I have all the knobs turned to a zero setting. So let's just try from the top and go down and see what happens. Just what, what I don't like is the uh, yeah, distance I have from the top load to operating the knobs when it's standing on the floor like this. Okay, so the top knob does not do anything. So the, the middle, the top. Okay, so it seems that the, um, the top is the BPS, the middle knob is the on time, and I'm not sure what the low one is yet. Okay, that is a manual tuning uh, potentiometer. So that tells us this has a fixed oscillator for the startup and then uses the current feedback after that. Whoa! That is getting seriously scary to sit so close to that pile. I must say that performs so much better than I expected, but that is also a little too scary to see, to sit the, so near to that one. Oh yeah.
So I hope you enjoyed the teardown and the small demonstration here. So until next time, see ya.